behalf of Tier Memorial Herman and the city of Pasadena, I'd like to welcome you to this Texas to Tokyo send-off celebration. This evening, we'll recognize the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic delegation from the Houston area, along with special guests you will hear from in just a few minutes. With empty stands and no families allowed to go to Japan due to the worldwide pandemic, we're so glad you showed up here in force to cheer on and send off our hometown amazing athletes and the delegation representing Team USA. Please join me in welcoming our special guest followed by the Paralympic delegation. First that came in, we'll start over here to my left with Steve Curley. He's a coach of the Tier Texans wheelchair rugby team. In uh, 2002, he was selected to the U.S. National Wheelchair Rugby Team. He was a tier patient and volunteered here at this program beginning in the 1990s as a very young man straight out of rehab. We have Mark Barr, three-time Paralympian, two games in swimming, one as a paratriathlete, and an honored ESPY award winner with, for the first male with a disability in 2018. We have Janice Burke, our CEO of the Harris County Houston Sports Authority. Laurie L. Christensen, Harris County Fire Marshal. Rhonda Abbott, Senior Vice President and CEO of Tier Memorial Herman, and our very own honorable, I call him my own too, Mayor Jeff Wagner. And now we'll get started over here, but before I get to the first one, we have two that weren't able to be here today. Ileana Rodriguez uh, says she doesn't mind. She is one of our tier, uh, has been one of our tier patients. She left this morning for Tokyo. Ileana was on the 2012 Paralympic swimming team and the chef de mission for the Tokyo, she is the chef de mission for the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic refugee team. For those of you that may not know, the chef de mission is not the cook, although she does cook great Cuban food. The chef de mission is one of the highest honors you can have of re representing a delegation. She was selected and is a Houston area Paralympian, one of our tier family, and again left this morning for Tokyo to be the chef de mission for the six athletes who are refugees and left uh, without a country and will be representing the refugee Paralympic team. Chuck French, who many of you know, the manager at the West Grid staff, left Wednesday to go meet up with USA Wheelchair Rugby, so he's not here. He's a, been a volunteer coach for TIER for a number of years. And now, without further ado, we have Carrie Ortiz. I'm going to address a uh, little more details about these. This was going to be like a slow march, and now it's fast. So I'm going to uh, bring it. I've got some more details about her. She has been selected as the first NBC broadcast for the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. Unfortunately, she's not going to Tokyo because of the pandemic, but we'll be flying up to Connecticut and working with NBC. What I haven't told you about, Carrie, is she is an Army veteran. It's gonna address a little more later, but I'm gonna skip around. Carrie came to Houston back in 2004 under the demise of TIER. We hosted a wheelchair uh, I'm sorry, an amputee sports camp and brought the first ever sitting volleyball team to Houston. Carrie was part of that group. Unfortunately, she didn't make the team that year for 2004, but she didn't give up. She didn't quit. She came back. She made the next three Paralympic teams, uh, winning two silver medals in 08 and 12 and 2016, got that ever elusive uh, gold medal for sitting volleyball. <laughs> Carrie was also most recent on our Tier Memorial Herman first ever adapted golf team. 
Uh, we've got Jasmine Ryan, who's here. She's going to her second Paralympic Games, first female in the probably the state of Texas representing shooting. Uh, we wish you well on that. She got her start at an event that Tier in the city put on at the Medal and Muscle Expo about 10 years ago. Uh, we've got Marcy Kern, who is a physical therapist at Tier for seven, almost 17 years in 2019, while on her PTO, paying her own way, volunteered at the Dubai World Para-Athletics Championships as a media photographer, and that kind of punched her ticket. She's going to Tokyo to the 2020 Paralympic Games as media, a photographer. She'll be attending her first Paralympic Games. Also going to the first Paralympic Games, someone who's brand new to us, new to the city of Pasadena, new to Tier and our adapted sports family. We couldn't welcome you more, making her first ever Paralympic Games representing Team USA Women's Sitting Volleyball, Jillian Williams Coffee. And someone I've known since she was five years old. She doesn't remember, but I do. It was here. She was on, uh, came here to a, a sports camp. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment. She was a Tier Memorial Herman Jr. Hot Wheel growing up. I think some of her first memories playing on that team, it helped her get her start and then went on to the University of Illinois to play wheelchair basketball there. She did not make, uh, no fighting, Eleanor. <laughs> you got much too many. Yeah, so she um, tried out in 2016 and didn't make it. Another one who didn't give up and didn't quit and made the 2017 team, made the 2018 national team, made the 2019 team, made the 2020 Paralympic team, got the news that Tokyo was canceled or changing. She didn't give up. She didn't quit training. She was coaching at the University of Illinois, the women's wheelchair basketball team as an assistant finishing her master's degree, and is I'm so proud of you, Caitlin, because I've known you so long. You're like a daughter or a granddaughter, but um, <laughs> let's not go granddaughter. That makes me old. <laughs> okay, I'm going to talk just a little bit more in these microphones. Okay, once again, oh, look, that, that's our delegation. What I would like to ask you to do at this time, because, you know, Marcy and I and these gals will be at the Paralympics what you guys won't get to experience. And so we're gonna share that moment here with them today is here in the national anthem, watching the American flag be raised to the top of the podium. And so today, if you would not mind standing as you are able, we have a flag and we're gonna play the national anthem. We got a little bit of a late start. I'm going to try to move this along. Once again, welcome to Tokyo, Texas to Tokyo, uh, sit out for the delegation. Before we move forward, I'd like to take a look back, especially if you're here for the first time. Some of you may wonder, why are we here? Outside, in the heat, in August, on a hot asphalt wheelchair softball field. 
Well, back in the late 1970s, the city of Pasadena, Parks and Recreation Department, began a small recreation program for people with cognitive disabilities in an elementary school. By the early 1980s, the city of Pasadena moved the program to a one-room, 1,200-square-foot building on a third of an acre park site in a residential area. It had a small outdoor pool, and the Parks and Recreation Department began growing the programs, especially wheelchair sports. By 1986 and 88, those years, the city acquired federal funding and with input of stakeholders, built and opened the doors of this, one of the first ever, we're gonna talk about first tonight, one of the first ever and continues to be one of the few municipal government parks and recreation facilities specifically designed to serve people with all types of disabilities. And while this is a nice brick and mortar building and asphalt out here, it's nice, <laughs> uh, it's hot, facility, it wouldn't be what it is without the people today. The certified therapeutic recreation staff, Michelle Blunt, Lauren Mitchell, and the support of her staff, Chris Cantu, Mariano Rodriguez, OZL is out here somewhere, uh, their manager, Tim Miller, who's not able to be here, the marketing specialist, Haley Roberts, and the recreation director now for the city of Pasadena, Jed Aplaca, and without the support of the top, the leadership, Mayor Jeff Wagner and his support, it's the people and the partners that make it what it is today. In 1988, with the support from TIER, the city hosted the first and what turned out to be the largest annual international wheelchair basketball tournament in the world, playing host to 32 teams from 13 countries at one time, and the staff here continue that today. That was 1988, long before there was an Americans with Disabilities Act. The city, again, with support from TIER, hosted two, not one, but two back-to-back -back national wheelchair softball tournaments here on this field and where you parked was transitioned into a field uh, and held back-to-back -back weekends, national wheelchair softball, followed by the Texas International Shootout, bringing three to 500 wheelchair athletes into the Houston and Pasadena area and over in the summer over the weekend. So if you think you're hot today, imagine playing wheelchair softball in August, in the heat, uh, out here, and the athletes did that. The city of Pasadena right here started one of the first wheelchair rugby teams with the support of TIER again, sponsoring and supporting, playing right here. Uh, Jasmine, the city, was the first ever recipient of an NRA grant that was seed money to start an adapted air rifle program in a municipal recreation center. The city also hosted the first tryouts in the USA region for the USA Paralympic wheelchair rugby team in 1999 to select the team that went to the 2000 Sydney Paralympic Games. This was prior to there being the Lakeshore Foundation. The city supported this with the support of TIER. And in 1990, the city, again, with support from TIER, hosted the first ever in the Houston area and likely in the state of Texas, a junior wheelchair sports day camp right here on this property, in that building, out here on this wheelchair softball field. This, the model then and continues now is to have adult wheelchair athletes as mentors and role models. And at that first camp, a very young man showed up who just got out of tear and said, I want to volunteer. That young man is here today. I'm still calling you young. It's Steve Curley. He was out here on this field. Steve was a patient of tear, and mind you, there was no HIPAA back then, so I'm not breaking any laws for all my bosses that are here. <laughs> and after discharge was on that first wheelchair rugby team that we had today, he continues playing on the tier Texans wheelchair rugby team, traveling around the country, coaching the team, managing and helping manage the team. 
In just a few minutes, I'll ask him to come up and say a few words, but I want to mention a few others first. Mark Barr was the first from Houston to win an ESPY for Best Male Athlete with a Disability in 2018. It's one of the highest honors you can get as an athlete with a disability. Larry L. Christensen used to work right here in the city of Pasadena, and she is now the first female Harris County Fire Marshal. I'm like, Larry, do we call you Chief or Marshal? I feel like we call you Chief and Marshal. And she's also responsible mayor for any damage that these trucks do out here. I want to be sure that she's, she's the one to go to. <laughs> We've got Janice Burke. She's the first leader, the CEO of the Harris County Houston Sports Authority, who collaborated and has partnered with TIER, along with her staff, the past four years to be so inclusive the most inclusive of people with disabilities. We've got a champion right here for our mission and our purpose for independence and inclusion. Since I've been back here the last four years, I can't thank you enough, Janice, for all you've done. You didn't have to, and the, having your staff support, we just had some wheelchair races out of the AAU track events, stadium that seats 10,000 people, and we were invited to uh, participate in that with the hopes in the future it becomes a part of the event. So thank you, Janice. We've got, I just have a few more first. There's a lot, but I'll spare. Rhonda Abbott, she's the first CEO and senior vice president in 61 year history to be a physical therapist that worked on the floor providing therapy and now is the CEO, senior vice president the lead at what U.S. News and World Report mistakenly labeled the number two rehab hospital in the country. We know we're number one. They were mistaken. And now, relatively newly, um, recently re-elected Mayor Jeff Wagner at the home of the city of Pasadena has never been a more supportive mayor that I know of in moving forward independence and inclusion through sport, recreation, fitness, and wellness, and the support that he gives. Without the support of, of you guys, it just wouldn't happen, and we can't thank you enough, and we're going to hear from you in just a minute. You might wonder why I'm describing all these guests over here when you thought the delegation is what you came for, but you know what? Without them, there wouldn't be them. And so, again, Chuck can't be here, Ileana can't, can't be here. I want to describe this group over here to my right one more time. Carrie Ortiz is an Army veteran. Uh, mentioned earlier in 2004, she came here to that sports camp. Uh, she didn't give up. She came to mentor kids and then went on to make those next three teams. She didn't quit. I suspect when the Paralympics are over, you might find, now that Carrie lives in Houston, you may find her in Jillian, that we'll get to here in a minute, along with Tier, and who knows, maybe the Harris County Houston Sports Authority and or Pasadena, developing the ever, first ever amputee sports and ongoing sitting volleyball program in the Houston area. Don't be surprised. <laughs> Something I didn't mention about Jasmine is she also plays on our tier, tier wheelchair rugby team when she's not shooting, and she also used to work at tier. So once again, we welcome her. I guess with all these firsts and all these examples, just imagine what you and what we can do moving forward. I just say if you have a dream in your heart and it's too big to be denied, don't give up. Don't let anyone, not even a pandemic, stop you from pursuing that dream. We've got some of our youth Hot Wheels here today. Maria, you got a big dream in your heart. You've lost two years of your high school playing wheelchair basketball. We're going to be back at it. Uh, Kevin and I see a few other athletes back there. 
those dreams in your heart don't give up. And now, Steve, I think I have, you have something to say and a presentation for the mayor. Thank you very much. First off, I just want to say that um, I'm a former tier patient, and I can tell you from experience that that's definitely a misprint, that tier's number two. All right? <laughs> tier's number one. There's no doubt about that. So, um, tier obviously is near and dear to my heart. Uh, Rhonda, I want to thank you for your leadership, uh, your continued support of uh, all of the wheelchair uh, and adaptive sports programs. So we really do appreciate that. Christine, you're out in the audience. I want to thank you as well. Also part of TIER. Um, Mayor uh, Jeff Wagner, the city of Pasadena is truly near and dear. I, I, I would drive literally an hour and a half to get to practice every week. I live far up north. And I drive here every week, and I'll never forget um, when we formalized our team here and how much support we had from the staff, from the city. Uh, individually, the support when I was trying out for the Paralympic teams and World Championship teams, it was just an, an amazing honor. Um, and so I want to thank you for your leadership as well, the continued support of the city of Pasadena, and I'd like to present you with uh, a jersey uh, for USA Wheelchair Rugby. So thank you, Matt. Thank you, Steve. Yes. Thank you. God bless you. Yes. Steve, thank, thank you so, so much on, on the jersey. Um, I'm also a patient of TIER. 1998, I'm a Houston police officer. I had a motorcycle wreck, uh, brain injury. I was at TIER for many, many months. Uh, they taught me how to walk, talk, get up, and, um, and be here how I am in a day. It's because of TIER. So I know what TIER is, and they are number one. Thank you so much. You know, being mayor of the city of Pasadena, there's many things I do that just touches my heart. Every time I come out to any event in this facility, it goes way beyond touching my heart. Today, I cannot describe how y'all have touched my heart. Carrie, every time I hear when Peggy was talking about you not, didn't want to quit, I bet you everybody here has the same story. You could have gave up. You didn't quit. All of y'all are true winners, true American winners, because you never quit. It just touches my heart. So many things I see in life and people give up that don't even have near the disabilities of y'all. Y'all are true, true heroes in all of us here who are on our feet, respect each and everything y'all do, each and every time y'all do it. God bless you and God bless your family. You know, partnerships is the reason why Pasadena is so great. Our partnership with TIER, again, being a patient and y'all got me back on my feet, it means something to me. So today, Ron, if you'll stand up, please. It's my honor I can read all this here, but all this is saying is how great TIER is and how much you care for your patients and beyond when we leave the hospital. And it means a lot to each and every one of us. Today, as mayor, it's my honor to make this day TIER Morrow Herman Adaptive Sports Day here in the city of Pasadena. Please take this proclamation and hang it with pride because we give it with all the pride that we have. God bless you, Tier, and God bless every athlete here. We love y'all. Thank you so much. Carrie Ortiz, a certificate of recognition from the city of Pasadena. Jasmine Ryan, a certificate that says congratulations on your hard work and dedication in achieving your dream. Team USA will be proudly represented and we will be cheering you on. Marcy Kern. Thank you, Marcy. You're also a Oh, now this is a shot.
Shocker, this one says something special. Congratulations to Peggy Turner on your hard work and dedication in supporting Team USA Paralympics. Julian Williams Coffee, congratulations on achieving your dreams. We will be cheering you on. And baby girl, Caitlin Eaton, congratulations. Thank you for representing Pasadena and Team USA. We'll be cheering you on. And I think we're good. Rhonda Abbott. Wow, what, what a privilege and honor to be here today, everyone. I want to stop for just a moment and talk about partners and people. That's what Peggy shared with us, right? Partners and people make this possible. How are y'all feeling right now about this event? Like, about, uh, yeah, exactly. We can't do what we do at Tier Memorial Herman without the support of partners and people, without your support, Mayor Wagner, the city of Pasadena, Janice, and the, the, the Harris County Sports Authority. We can't do what we do. And we, are, we really do strive, as Mayor Wagner said, to deliver beyond health care and serve the rest of the community of individuals with disabilities. So our mission, as Peggy shared, of independence and inclusion is something that the athletes are representing today and our delegation is representing today. We're so excited to see you guys head to, head to Tokyo. Um, can't wait to watch from, from back here. I want to also thank everyone that's here today for taking time to support the athletes, athletes in the audience, the different organizations that brought everyone together today. We're thankful that it's not as hot as it could be, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's really it's really quite nice. And uh, it's just an honor to be able to celebrate these accomplishments. We can't wait to see what you all do in Tokyo and how you're supporting everyone back here at home also. So with that, I think I'm going to introduce Janice Burke, who, as we were talking about first today, it's just a phenomenal time to celebrate first. Janice was also the first female CEO for the Harris County Sports Authority. And we like to acknowledge that whenever we can. Um, come on up, Janice. While Janice is walking up, I want to say one big thank you to Peggy Turner, who uh, I'm going to say you're the first sports and recreation leader to come back to Tier maybe. Um, and we, we can't do anything without Peggy. She brings a history, a hope, and just phenomenal work ethic to pull this all together. So thank you, Peggy. Thank you. Thank you to the tier team who represents and came out tonight and supports everyone as well. And with that, Janice, take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Tier Memorial Herman. You are great partners, and we love what you do. I have watched them give hope to so many. You know, sports is the great unifier. Nelson Mandela used it to unify an entire country. And as we send off these athletes, we're so proud to have so many from this region as part of Team USA. And, you know, I look at that often, the Olympians, the Paralympians that are produced right here, and I wonder, is that the Texas spirit, that pioneer spirit, that can-do spirit, that, you know, tenacity that we're going to just push through? Um, maybe that's the reason that we have so many great athletes. But to all of you, I know you're going without family and friends. It's a very different Paralympics than normal. But know that all of these people and many more are going to be cheering for you every minute. And when you get ready to go and you breathe in just before you get out there and compete, know that we are here behind you and we are so excited to be part of this. Thank you for letting us be part of your journey, and thank you for inspiring so many through sports. Thank you, Janice. And before I introduce the next speaker, I want to acknowledge someone who originally wasn't going to be able to be here, but I would have a seat over here for him. So Joe Campbell, 
Come on up here. Come take my seat. I'm not sitting back down. I've worked with Joe Campbell over the years, those first Muddle and Muscle Expos. He's a volleyball official, a world para volleyball official. Julian Money now, official. He's, he is headed to Tokyo. I typically see Joe every four years, now five in another country. He lives out, I believe, in the Jersey Village area, a retired school teacher. He is part of the Paralympic delegation going to Tokyo. He serves on the World Volleyball, Sitting Volleyball Organization, has been an official and a referee at many competitions nationally, internationally, and worldwide. And this is your... It's, it's our eighth game, so we both will be going to our eighth Paralympic Games soon. So, Joe, I'm glad you could make it out tonight. He is now the president of the Pan American Zones for Sitting Volleyball. So... Joe's also a veteran, and he has brought his ROTC classes out to present colors at many events that we've had, so off the cuff. So at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, someone who is also a good friend, I must admit, not must, but proud to admit, um, and let her say a few words. Again, responsible for these big trucks and, and you guys here. I'm going to let her tell you a little bit more about why they're here. Hi. Thank you. You might be wondering why is the Harris County Fire Marshal here in Pasadena at this event? Again, grew up here, went to school here, worked here, and on July 3rd I decided to go do what any good boss does and eat dinner with the folks, which are the firemen who were cooking, and they are amazing cooks. And I was blessed to find that one of our new hires that came in in January of 2021, um, we have a second hazmat team now, um, got to talking to him about his wife. And, you know, it's always, um, it, it's great when you hear a spouse, I mean, just talk about the pride and the love for their spouse. But he was showing me pictures and hooked me up with Facebook and and I'll tell you, we act as a family. I, we believe that every employee that works for us, you're a member of our family. Your family is now our family because, again, in emergency response, it's what we have to do. We have to make sure you get home every day and that your family's taken care of. What I'm really excited about is now we get to support, I'm going to support all of you, but especially the women sitting paralegal volleyball team. Um, but... Miss Jillian Williams Coffee, I cannot tell you, not only am I appreciative you let your husband come work for us and, and go out on a lot of dangerous scenes, um, but now you're a part of our family. And I'm just grateful that now I feel like we have a whole new family. This is, you know, it was so funny. I was sitting there talking to him, and I'm like, she's what? She, wait a minute. I know somebody who used to do something with that. And I turned around and called Peggy, and I'm like, I'm sitting here with this guy, and let me tell you. And I think next thing you know, they're talking. So you never know uh, the contacts that you make, maybe the person you're sitting next to now, what a difference they're going to make in your life. So I want to thank Peggy. I want to thank you, Mayor, um, the city of Pasadena, because I feel that our family now is grown, and to get, I, we are just we're just – grateful to be a, a part of this now so thank you and we look forward and we'll be cheering all of you on thank you thank you Laurie and as we're getting ready to wrap up I would like to introduce again reintroduce Mark Barr if you'd make your way over uh, again a 2018 SB winner three-time Paralympian two games in swimming Paratri, the first time Paratri was an event, fourth in the world, fourth in the world. Um, I feel like should be going to Tokyo with us, and I'm going to let him offer a few, uh, tell you a little bit about himself and a little bit of a few words of encouragement as we wrap up the program this evening. Uh, first, thank you, Peggy, for the introduction, and thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight with y'all. Uh, it's been an amazing program so far. Um, 
It truly is an honor and privilege and to meet the and celebrate the Paralympians that is they're going to be leaving for Tokyo in just a couple days here, a week and a half. Um, first, I just want to say congratulations for making the team. As a three-time Paralympian, I know all the hard work um, that goes into qualifying for Team USA. Countless hours, weeks, months, years of training and sacrifice go into making a Paralympic team. And then you have COVID thrown into the mix in the postponement of a year and more sacrifice and more hours. And you guys are still here. You're still duking it out. So kudos to you guys for your resiliency um, in making the team. Um, your reward is you get to go over to Tokyo and represent your families, the city of Houston, and the United States of America on the greatest stage at the Tokyo Paralympic Games, which is a pretty phenomenal feeling, um, having been there a couple times. So congratulations. These Tokyo Games have already made history with the COVID protocols and the, um, the coverage that NBC has put forth with 1,200 hours of TV time. Um, what that coverage means is that there's going to be millions of people around the globe that are going to be tuning in to watch you guys compete. And that puts a lot of pressure on you guys because that's the first time in history that we've had that much, that much coverage. So you guys are going to be setting the precedent for what it means to be a Paralympian for millions of people that have never watched Paralympic sports before. So you guys are true ambassadors um, and leading the way for the next generation of athletes to come behind you, people that might be here in the crowd today. Um, and inspire them and motivate them to pursue Paralympic sport um, in years to come. As a three-time Paralympian, I think my best advice for you guys going into the Games is to enjoy the process, enjoy the lead-up to the Games, stay present, and on competition day or race day, whatever it may be, um, to have no regrets and to leave it all on the field so that you can look back and reflect back with, with no regrets that you gave it your all and represented your country with pride. Um, finally, good luck to you all. I look forward to watching you guys on TV, and hopefully you guys come home with some hardware for Team USA. Cheers. Thank you so much, Mark. One of the things I didn't mention about Mark that uh, I feel like goes simultaneous with sport is educa education and the opportunity for education like Caitlin has done and the other Paralympians. And Mark is a ICU trauma nurse at Ben Taub studying nurse anesthesia currently. So in addition to training, he's putting that same hard work into being uh, a professional. And uh, so we appreciate you, Mark, and I hope to see you in the 2024 Paris Games. That wraps up our program. My understanding is the mayor has several other commitments this evening. That's kind of the life of the mayor. So I can't thank you enough again, Mayor, for being out here, uh, supporting the staff. And again, thanks to all of you for giving up your time tonight and come support. Um, I think before we head out, something that I'm used to hearing at the games and the ones who have been is a USA chant. Please, right now, if you'd join me in a USA. U USA! 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 Yeah, with that, we'll dismiss for the evening. Thank you so much. <laughs>